welcome to this week's episode of Liberty Chat, brought to you by the Liberal Democrats. Welcome everyone to another episode of Liberty Chat, your weekly roundup of liberty related and Liberal Democrats related items and news info from around the country. Uh, my name's Kirsty O'Sullivan. Please welcome our regular panellist, Mr. Campbell Newman in beautiful Queensland. G'day all. And it's been very stormy here this afternoon. <laughs> uh, we have Mr. David Limbrick in beautiful Melbourne. Not always beautiful, but mostly beautiful Melbourne. Hi, how's it going, guys? And John Ruddick up there in Sydney town. How are you, John? I'm terrific, Kirsty. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, gentlemen. I've got a few little IT problems tonight, Kirsty, but we'll just battle through. Stop we'll battling that we'll camera, Ruddick. We'll, yes. <laughs> we'll have a yes. 130 or 150 people all feeling very ill. Correct. So, yes, John is having some very bad internet issues. So he is having to struggle and hold his phone for a whole hour. Um, so that's yes. going to be great. <laughs> so obviously we want to sort of you know, a little bit of a roundup for what's happened in the last week for everyone and what have you got coming up? We'll start again with you, Campbell. What's What's been happening in Queensland for the campaign? Sure, look, starting with last Wednesday, Australia Day, and, and it was I was an apology um, because I was attending a very large citizenship ceremony in uh, the uh, exhibition grounds in Brisbane, 800 new citizens, probably another three to 400 guests as well. So a big event to go to, worth being there to be recognised. Uh, since then, uh, what, I've been, what have I been doing? Well, uh, I did uh, Paul Murray Live on Sunday night. Um, on Monday night, I've attended a, uh, Monday afternoon, attended a large uh, protest rally uh, at Noosa, on the Noosa River, mm. uh, run by some very uh, freedom-loving sort of people, local people, who are, it was particularly against vaccine mandates and the like. Um, we just ran today a very successful fundraiser, um, raised quite a fair, quite a lot of money. Uh, I'll be doing uh, Corrie Bernardi's show on Friday evening on Sky, and on uh, Saturday morning I'll be doing an interview on 4BC, an extended interview about uh, you know what the Lib Dems are about and what the campaign's about. Um, I'd like to welcome as well because uh, she's probably should have welcomed her before I've mentioned her, but Kayla Hanna to the campaign, who's our media advisor for the Queensland campaign. So she was, uh, she's been out and about and came to our first, uh, you know, that, that event up on, on the, up, up at Noosa mm. and is starting to get her uh, head around what we've got to do. Uh, we've really fired up. We've got a great uh, media uh, strategy sorted out. We know exactly how we're going to be campaigning up here, which is just slightly nuanced and a bit different to, to, to some of the other campaigns, but that's, I think, appropriate. Um, and can I also welcome Steve Murphy, is the, the candidate for Capricorn. We're going to be hearing from him shortly. It's terrific to, to hear he's on board. So that's up around Rockhampton, that, that electorate. So, yeah, that, that's me. Um, going pretty well. Oh, I'll just make one comment. I mean, the news poll, you know, Morrison's been found out. Negative, <laughs> favorability, negative 18 net favourability. Uh, it's what many of us have got for a long time. People, particularly like John Ruddock, myself, who've, who've, who've changed camps. Uh, we, we saw the hollow man for what he is a long time ago, but now yeah. I think Australians are tuning in and a, and a primary vote of 34% for the, uh, for the coalition. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. I, I have some sadness about that, but that's our opportunity to go and say to the people, well, don't, don't vote for the Labor Party. You know, you know if you've been... People who voted for the coalition were the real liberals. Mm, that's exactly right. And I did see that uh, the Queensland campaign team have started doing their weekly campaign catch-ups or whatever they're calling it that are going out to all the membership base in Queensland as well, just giving a rundown. So if you're in Queensland, that probably would have hit your mailbox uh, this morning. And that's going to be happening every week as well as a bit of a bit of a roundup, which is great information. David, what's happening here around Victoria? I know I'm rather <laughs> sizzled out. I've been going to so many sausage sizzles uh, and the election hasn't even been called yet. But David, what about you? Yeah, um, so uh, last week, I think I appeared as a pre-record on Liberty Chat with the interview with uh, Spike Cohen. And that was a great discussion. I hope you all enjoyed it if you watched it. I really enjoyed talking with Spike. Mm. He's a really cool guy and... Um, you know, as you would expect, being libertarians, we didn't agree. It didn't disagree on much. We sort of had a bit of a discussion, and um, yeah, if you haven't watched that already, that's on my Facebook and on the LDP uh, Liberal Democrats main page. 
Um, but yeah, that was great fun. But um, whilst my recording was playing on uh, Australia Day, I was out and getting amongst it. Um, I went to a citizenship ceremony as well. It was much smaller because, you know, we have smaller gatherings here because of restrictions and everything. But I went to um, Frankston, uh, Frankston Art Centre and um, got to speak at a, at a citizenship ceremony. So that was good. I cracked a few jokes and they laughed, which is always a... a um, scary thing because I'm not much of a comedian but I, I did get a laugh so that's good and then in the afternoon I was really honored to be invited to something quite unusual which was the Victorian uh, Hong Kongers event and um, you may or may not know that I'm the I was the co-convener and now I'm the convener of the Parliamentary Friends of Hong Kong in uh, Victorian Parliament and um, we'd previously spoken to a guy called Ted Huey who was a legislative council member in Hong Kong and he uh, escaped rather dramatically to um, uh, the Europe and, and eventually found his way to Australia and now lives in Adelaide with his family. But um, he's basically uh, living in exile from Hong Kong, who was a democratically elected legislative council member. And he came along to Melbourne for this Hong Kongers event on Australia Day and it was absolutely wonderful and an honour to uh, speak with him again. He's a really nice, wonderful guy. And, um, you know, he's really interested in, um, in democracy and freedom and um, was great talking to um, so many immigrants who are from Hong Kong who uh, felt the same way. And it was, it was wonderful. Um, so, yeah, and there's a few pictures of that. I'm probably going to have a speech that I did at some stage, but basically, um, yeah, I'm pretty enthusiastic about the Hong Kong community in Melbourne and throughout Australia. I think they're wonderful additions to our country and, um, yeah, they're wonderful. Um, next weekend, we've got something really cool. Um, if you live in Melbourne, especially if you live in Southeast, we've got a new branch meeting, more barbecues. So um, Kirsty's going to get barbecued out. Um, but our inaugural Southeast Metro branch meeting, um, you can come along to that. That will be held at Kingston Heath Reserve in Cheltenham at 11 o'clock in the morning until two in the afternoon. And I will be there. So if you're there, I'd love to catch up with you and meet you. Um, there'll be a whole bunch of other people there. Um, so please come along to that. And also on the uh, 19th, we are going to have our huge monster campaign launch. Um, which uh, Carolyn White, uh, one of our Senate candidates, has been doing a lot of work organising with lots of other people. There's going to be bands, there's going to be food trucks, there's going to be, I don't know, face painting, there's going to be all sorts of stuff there. Um, it's going to be a family event. Um, we're going to get heaps of people there, I hope. Um, so please come along. It's going to be totally awesome. Um, so, yeah, that'll be on the 19th. But if you're a, um, if you're a party member, you would have got uh, details about it but we'll be posting more on social media if you haven't seen it already so save those dates uh next saturday which is the fifth and save the 19th the 19th is going to be the big one but yeah. please come along on on the fifth as well if you can that'll be just around the corner from my office also yeah. my office is now open again mm -hmm. um thank you very much to the volunteers who came along and helped me set it up and throw out rubbish um was very very much appreciated and thank you Kirsty, for helping to organize that um, that was so wonderful. Um, the office is operational again in Cheltenham. So if you haven't been here before, I'm on the PN Highway in Cheltenham, right near Southland. Um, feel free to pop in during business hours. I may or may not be here, but one of my staff will be here. Um, we've got uh, bags and stuff with uh, goodies in them you can Mitch. take away. So with, yeah, with um, hand sanitizer and stuff. So we don't quite have, in. you haven't got like uh, like the, the dreamy cho, you haven't got like pillowcases and doona covers with your face, have you? No, well, oh, I've got a, a, a fridge magnet with my face on it and some <laughs> emergency phone numbers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's interesting and useful stuff. But yeah, you you can drop in anyway if you're um, in the area. And this weekend, as well as the launch of the Southeast Branch in Cheltenham, there's also the Yarra Valley uh, barbecue on the Saturday uh, and there's also the Point Cook, so the Western Melbourne one is also this weekend. So three barbecues to choose from if you're in Melbourne this weekend. John Ruddick, what about you? Going to a few sausage sizzles up there in Sydney as well? Look, it really feels as though the campaign has started to go, go up to the next gear. But, Kirsty, I only want to talk about one thing. I want to talk about the Willoughby by-election. Yes. It's not this Saturday, it's the next Saturday. One hour ago... I picked up 25,000 of these beautiful brochures. 
It's a very simple brochure. We've got a candidate, Sam Gunning, but out we, are, we are making this a referendum on whether we want to keep going with COVID extremism or whether the people of Willoughby want to send a message to, not, to the governments all around Australia that we've had enough of this stuff and we've got to immediately get back to normal. Now, we are hoping for a... We believe if people can see this cool brochure, which we've got 25,000 of them, and there's 25,000 letterboxes. So we want, I think an email, if you're on the New South Wales database, I think 10,000 people got an email in the last half hour or so. We need people to, to step up and to commit to distributing these flyers. And we, are, we, we think we can get a reasonable vote. If, I, I just dropped off 5,000 flyers. I met some people on the weekend. They've, there's 12 of them. They want to distribute as many as they can. Just want to quickly read out what the suburbs of Willoughby are, Kirsty. So we've got... Yes. Artarman, Camaray, Castle Crag, Chatswood, Chatswood West, Cremorne, Crow's Nest, Lane Cove North, Middle Cove, Narrenburn, Neutral Bay, some of North Sydney, North Willoughby, Northbridge, Roseville, St Leonard's, Willoughby East. Okay, so now this, so if people can come and uh, give the phone number a call and the email, they can pick up some brochures and, and letterbox them. But on Saturday, we're calling it Super Saturday. We're meeting it midday at 12 o'clock at the concourse in in victoria road in or victoria street or victoria avenue in chatswood we're meeting there at 12 o'clock we're going to go and do three or four hours of letterbox dropping maybe three hours and then for everybody that's been letterbox dropping we get the, the party is going to be putting on a uh, a party at the orchid hotel in chatswood so we're going to have a fun time so let's go all out and let's see how many votes we can actually get that's brilliant. And Sam Gunning has been uh, part of the party for a long time now. Uh, he's, he's on the he's local great, council yeah. up there. We, we all love Sam. So he's, a, he's an excellent candidate. So that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Righto. And well, I hope, of, certainly hope so. A lot of people commenting saying that they are happy to help out as well. So if anyone is wanting to help out John and that team for in that Willoughby by-election, you can certainly email yes. John or send straight into me here at contact at ldp.org.au or just leave a message on the website because uh, it'll get passed through to the volunteer coordinator in Sydney. Uh, now, we're going to go into our theme of the night, which is talking about the regions. Um, we do have a whole bunch of regional candidates getting named up. I will also say, because we're here in, in, the, in the waiting room, I suppose, and we'll be in the chat box, we do have Daniel Lukovic, who will be our candidate for Wentworth, who announced on uh, Sky News last week. So he is in the chat box if anyone is wanting to message Daniel as well. But firstly, as I said, going back to talking about the regions, we have three awesome Liberal Democrats candidates, starting out with Amanda Mead in Victoria, Dean McRae in New South Wales, and Steve Murphy in Queensland. How are you all? Hi. Hello. Hey guys, how are you? Now, anyone who's been around the party for more than five minutes is already very familiar with our freedom chef, Dean McRae. He had some internet issues, but we luckily have got him on. Dean, how are you? Well, I'm much better now. We solved that little problem. I didn't realise <laughs> to be a panellist, you needed to have an actual account, whereas, you know, I've only ever joined Zoom meetings. I've never really bothered to run any. So okay, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to, to do these sort of things with everybody. How is everyone? Well, we're all good. So, Dean, you're our candidate for Riverina, your home, your hometown. You're a local around that area as well. Um, first of all, we, we'll just continue introducing everyone else first before we get back to you. And of course, your campaign launch that you've got coming up in a couple of weeks. But Amanda, you're down here in Southwest Victoria for the uh, for the elected district, sorry, of Wannan. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> Great to have you here. You've got a huge area to cover. And Steve Murphy, who I'm a little bit biased towards because he is from my hometown electorate of Capricornia. Hi, Steve. Hi, Kirstie. How are you? I'm very well. It's great to have you all here. So I just wanted to go through a little bit about, we want, we want our members to know who you are and why you're running and why you think that the regions need representation by libertarians or classical liberals in terms of our party. We'll start with you, Amanda, ladies first. Oh, um, well, I'm 36 and I live right near the Grampians in Southwest Victoria. Um, I decided that I wanted to run because like COVID was cut out here, it's kind of been used as like a guise to remove all the resources from regional and send them into Melbourne. Um, and yeah, we just, the more I looked into it, the more I realized that on every level, 
regionals been ignored or neglected and yeah like we can't get into specialist doctors you know the local hospital trying to fundraise to get an MRI machine but that's the closest hospital between where I am and the SA border it covers a long area you'd think that they'd be able to get funding for an MRI machine and yeah it's getting pretty bad out here <laughs> Yeah, and I know that you've already been driving all around the countryside. It is a large area. Yeah. I um, thirty-three thousand uh, square kilometers. Yeah, it's it's huge. I was out there with Amanda. She's already been on the barbecue campaign trail. We had a weekend of it last week in. Uh, well, actually, I went to Torquay first, but uh, Mortlake and Warrnambool last weekend with our Senate candidates. Crystal Mitchell and Carolyn White as well. And Amanda's just been running around putting up posters everywhere. You've had a bit of media as well, which has been great. Tell us about and, uh, that. Oh, yeah, really good. I'm on the ABC country radio tomorrow morning. I've been in a couple of newspapers and um, that's all really going well. But I will say, as, as you saw, Kirsty, Caroline and Crystal did very well with the <laughs> oldie locals at, at the pub on the weekend. She got oh, them that wearing, was so much fun. They got them wearing T-shirts and they were the best walking promotion for the LDP. So and and they them. were old Labor voters as well. They yeah. admitted to being Labor voters and so we stuck shirts on them. I and saw them today and they were like, yep, LDP all the way. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, you know, they're on they're on the website basically now. We put shirts on them, took a photo. <laughs> it's there for prosperity. Uh, Dean, tell us about the Riverina. Tell any of our newer members a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Okay. Um, I'm a, well, I'm a chef by trade. I'm a single uh, full-time dad. So that's sort of a bit of a newer development. So uh, I'm, now that's a bit of a priority for me. I've been around the party for about, uh, I think 2013 or 2012, I kind of activated a membership before that. I was just watching like everybody else. And uh, I've been fairly well committed to the cause, I think, um, for quite a long time. Before we became as popular as we have the last few years, I was kind of the guy that was thrown at um, elections here and there to sort of fly the flag more so than anything. So somebody had to get punched in the face first. That was my role, as you can tell. Um, it, this will be my fourth. It was supposed, the Eden Monero by-election was supposed to be my last sort of crack at this, but obviously this is the freedom election. And as such, there was no way I was going to sit this one out. And uh, when COVID hit, I moved back home to Tamora, which is where I was born, uh, the seat of Riverina and Michael McCormack. And... Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the election that was sort of designed, really. This, this period of time was what the Liberal Democrats was designed for. It's why we were, it's why we were invented. It's our entire role, really. Uh, without this sort of battle to fight, we have no use in the political market. But with it the way it is, we're here perfectly to hold everybody to account, bring everything back to equilibrium and really hold the big parties to account. So I've agreed to do it again. Fourth time lucky. I don't necessarily, I'm not, you know, I don't have anybody who does know me knows I'm not passionate about being a politician. I'm just passionate about the freedom and liberty mm. that's been stolen from us. And of course, um, you know, I'm quite happy to take barbs at the former deputy prime minister all day long. And hopefully we can, we can take a big chunk out of his primary vote. So mm. Mm. Um, that's kind of the short and the long of. And that's where we're at. So he couldn't deliver a barb if his life depended on it, mate. So it's all right, Dean. I don't think you're any under any pressure there, mate. Oh. <laughs> well, and I there's a there's a few people in here saying that uh, I was born in Forbes. Fiona was born in Forbes and knows the Riverina well. Uh, Liam said he was also born in Tamora. Um, so there's a there's a few other locals around in here as well. So hopefully we can get them working with your campaign too. Hopefully they can all come to the campaign. Hopefully they can come to our campaign launch uh, on the 16th, so the day after our big court hearing. That's going to be red hot. So anyone who is in the area, get your tickets. 25 bucks. The speaker list is pretty cool. Uh, Ross Cameron's agreed to MC. John Ruddick, I don't know if any of you have heard of him. He's um, <laughs> going to be speaking. Uh, Tim Quilty will be up from, from Victoria. And also um, John Larter is, is uh, sort of all agreed to participate. There might be a few others yet because I've, I've been known to pull a random crowd of interesting speakers when I, when I try to. So it'll be a great <laughs> event. They're 25 bucks ahead. And anybody who misses out will be missing out. Should be fun. And that's February the 16th in Wagga. I'm going to send my parents because they live in Aria Park. So. <laughs> Beautiful. We'll have them. We'll have them. Beautiful. Bring them along. We'd love to meet them. 
And I know we've got a couple that are going to drive up from Melbourne as well. Now, Steve, what about yourself? How did you end up here? Tell us a little bit about you and why you feel this is important. Uh, okay, well, I live in Yapoon, which is um, on the coast, uh, just east of Rockhampton, so about eight hours north of Brisbane. Um, I'm a teacher, um, and about a week before the school holidays started, um, we all got an email saying that you needed to be mandated if you wanted to return to work. Um, now, I, I pretty much decided that, you know, I, I was writing it out. I didn't really want to take the vaccines at, at the time. I, I just thought they were, were experimental. And I, I'm reasonably healthy. I like to think I'm young. I'm in my 50s, but I, I didn't consider myself at, at, at great risk. So I, I was leaving it. Um, but once they started telling me that I had to do it, it, it sort of just, it, you know, got my bristles up and I didn't really like it. Um, consequently, I have been suspended from work. Um, I don't know how much I can say because it's it's going through a lot of legal um, issues at the moment. All, all I can say really is I'm suspended and we're, we're seeing how it pans out. Uh, we've got a lot of people who are fighting to see if, you know, all these teachers, and there are a lot of them, um, will come back. Um, our, the Queensland, for the Queenslanders here, um, they will know that um, on the, let me get the dates right, uh, school was due to come back, uh, no, let me start uh, a bit earlier. Um, we had to fill out a survey as teachers to say whether we were going to take it or uh, the vaccine or not. Um, and it was either uh, you're vaccinated, you're, you have an appointment to be vaccinated or you're unvaccinated. And there wasn't really any, any scope to say, oh, I'm considering it or, or you, know, I, you know, I might take a different one. Um, now, that was on the 7th of January. We had to have those, um, those surveys in at that time. Now, on the 10th of January, the Queenslanders will know that it all just fell apart and, you know, school was delayed for two weeks. The seniors are going on to um, uh, the Zoom meetings like this, uh, learning face-to-face -face was gone. Um, the 11s and 12s are back. They started back on Monday and the, the rest of the, the schools are coming back um, next week, I believe. I don't get the emails anymore. I've been shunned as 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 an wow. unclean person not even the emails wow yeah i i it's it's funny i went in there because i had to hand my computer and keys back in and it's uh you get this funny sort of um look even when you're in the shopping center you know that's you know I, I wear the mask under here just keeps my beard in in check but what i what made me join the party and and and, and think that this is really important is just how quickly things have changed and how 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 fast we're moving to a totalitarian sort of government where just they'll tell you what to do and you just do it. And I just really don't like that. Um, so that's how I, I got into the party. And I said, look, I'll, I'll put my hand up. I'm, I'm single. I can sort of keep myself afloat um, out of a job for a while. There's a lot of teachers up here who have had to give in uh, to the vaccine. There's probably nurses, firemen and policemen as well, who said, look, we just can't survive without a wage. So they've, they've given their arm to the vax, which I just find reprehensible. Um, so I, I've joined the party and said, look, I'll put my hand up. I've got, you know, I don't have kids. So I've got less to lose. So everyone's got to do, do something, I think. And I thought, well, I can do this one thing. Um, mm. So that's that's where, where I'm at and why I'm here, yeah. And I've actually been, um, it's been great for me to see as a Yapoon local and Rob Cribb will laugh at me talking about Poon Town all the time. So I'm always so excited about Steve, but um, <laughs> there's been actually a really great movement, uh, freedom movement in Yapoon that I've been seeing. There's been, uh, you know, there's been protests, there's been meetings. Uh, I know that you've know, had a few different politicians at big town hall meetings where the room has been packed. Well, and, uh, I know, and, and there's probably, been a bunch of homeschool corporations popping up in Yapoon, yeah. which is fantastic. So the probably the most well-known politician from Yapoon is Matt Canavan. He lives mm -hmm. in, in Yapoon. Um, and he, he's sort of very much anti-mandate. I've spoken at one protest with him. Um, but, yeah, we're, there's a lot of people here. We're a very small town. There's only about probably 6,000 in the town. But at one of these protests, we got about 400 people, which yeah. is, is significant. And even those that didn't turn up to the protests as we're marching down, there's people in their cars beeping their horns. And um, so, yeah, there's, there's, um, there's a groundswell, even for those who really don't want to, 
be in the first wave will be correct. in the second wave. So yeah, correct. And Brian is in the chat with the old joke: "Where is your poon next to your knife and fork?" Uh, that's one of my granddad's. There was also a song in the eighties: "Where the hell is your poon?" Um, so anyway, so I'm loving that. But I just, as I said, I just wanted to talk with the three of you about you know regional representation and, and why it is so important. And Steve, there is a lot of comments in support for you in that chat when you get in there after. There's a lot of comments, which is lovely. Um, there is actually also a question here for Dean from Chris. What are your thoughts on the Riverina State movement? Have you heard about that? If you're talking about sort of a lot to do with the, obviously Tim Quilty's been pushing a Rexit movement and then obviously that flows over into a Riverina State movement. There's also been similar movements all over the country at various points in time. Obviously, Hutt River in WA, there's a fairly solid crowd up near Armadale Tamworth area, John Ruddick's home, home stomping ground and my grandmother's stomping ground actually. Uh, there's a bit of a bit of a movement up there along the similar lines. I think look, long term it's a, a great idea that diluting the power of the states as they are and obviously taking as much power away from the big parties and the federal government and breaking it down to a real local level. If the crowd in your are confident with Steve teaching, vaccinated or unvaccinated, I don't see any problem whatsoever with that local area going, these are our rules. We're happy enough to operate within our own rules. If you don't like them, um, you're free to sort of obviously oppose them, you know, democratically or leave or people who go, I really like their rules. They're fantastic. I'm going to pack up and move to Yapoon because they run a, a ship that I'm really happy with. Mm. Um, and, and there's pros and cons to all those sorts of ideas. And well, I just I just think the more freedom and, and people's opportunity to choose, um, the better. I mean, exactly. Lichten, is it Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein over in, <laughs> over in Europe? It's phenomenal. People can leave any time. The suburbs can break up. The You know, there's there's a lot of rules there that when you have a look at it, they're fantastic. And, people, they, you know, people go, well, why would you ever want to leave? It's great. We've got so many freedoms. We do what we want. Well, well Hutt, River, Hutt River is for sale right now. We can all buy Hutt River and make our own Libertopia. Um, I'll chip in for that. I'm happy. To <laughs> that. No hot out there, though. I, I don't. Want, I like more trees. How, Amanda, Steve, and Dean? How can we follow you all on social media? How can we follow your campaigns, Amanda? Um, so I've got Facebook, uh, which is a, just Amanda Mead, um, Liberal Democrat candidate, yep. and then I've got the, in the chat box after, by the way. Yeah, and Instagram's the same. Um, I'm I'm not going down the Twitter rabbit hole. It just <laughs> For me, I don't. I don't think um, you've got enough going on. Yeah. She's got about to give birth. There's crazy yeah. animals all over the house. Oh, I just uh, sometimes I don't think it's it's the healthiest environment from what I've seen. And um, you know, mental health is such a big big thing. And as Kirsty knows, like me and my family, we're huge on mental health. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to protect my mental health while we go. Wise through. move, wise move. Otherwise, you get in trouble like Dean and John do all the time. Yes. Steve, how do we follow you? You've got a brand new Facebook page. No, it's very exciting. I only found out about it today. Um, I will mention I've sent you an email already, uh, Kirsty. You'll get that. Uh, the the email address on there is wrong, so I'll have that fixed, or someone who has more IT um, skills than me will fix that. Um, but uh, it's in the chat already. It's right at the very top. Um, but you can follow me on that page. I just want to um, follow up something that Dean said about, you know, uh, parents making the choice. I think the mistake that the governments have made now is, is um, bringing the children into it. Um, a, a lot of people are, are, are tolerant of the government when they do the crazy things. We all know they're a little bit crazy. Um, and they'll, they'll put their arm and get the jab just to, you know, keep themselves happy. But once they start... Um, you know, mandating vaccine, vaccines for children. I've seen a big change in people here that said, no, 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 hang on, that's that's a bridge too far. Mm. Um, and I'm already in talks with um, uh, with a lady here, I won't mention names at the moment because it's still still ongoing, uh, about doing tutoring services and pulling, pulling kids Beautiful. out of the school because yeah. they're in talk of, you know, that um, they'll vaccinate your kids with or without your permission, which mm. it just, it just, I just, it, unspeakable. Yeah, unspeakable. Exactly. I sent a pretty firm letter to my kid's school on his first day saying, don't touch my kid. I've got lawyers yeah. lined up. You've got to do that before. You don't don't be uh, reactive. You've got yeah. to be proactive. Well, yeah. I will say um, my son has not worn a mask in this whole two years. Uh, he didn't go back to school last year because of the mask mandate, and he did go this year, and we had already spoken to them and said that he will not be wearing a mask. Day two. And he felt so uncomfortable, he actually asked his teacher for a mask. 
And so we've had it's another not good discussion. for them. It's, no. we're, we're social animals. We need yeah. just the smile and just being able to interact with kids and seeing your facial expressions. Yeah. If you take that away, you, you, you're losing them. You're, you're, you're destroying this generation. Yeah. Um, and they'll, they're, they're, the ones that have come through now, you know that they're a bit fragile with their phones and whatever. Mm. But um, take, away their, take away the last social interaction, which is their facial features, and they're, they're gone. They won't be able to function. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, Dean, how do we follow you? How do we follow your campaign? Uh, look, I've got my all my personal. Um, I've got Facebook. I've got Twitter. A lot of the handles are Freedom Chef. Um, my other little brand is Resolute TV. So actually, if you want to check out some real libertarian-y type discussions, I've had David Limbr uh, David Limerick. Uh, I've had David Lionhelm. I've had Jeffrey Tucker. I've had a lot of the American guys who have been candidates as presidential candidates, all sorts of stuff, guys running for governor in the US. So some real libertarian themes on there obviously because that's kind of my thing um so feel free to check that out on youtube um also i've got twitter it's a freedom chef handle I, i'm fairly new to that one this is the first time i've really delved into the twittering um i've got instagram all that sort of stuff and obviously my candidates page and obviously the most important part at the moment is i'm tr really trying to flog these tickets for the river and yes. rebellion event on the 16th of uh this month now at the Riverine Club in Wagga, the 25 bucks a pop. John's going to be there uh, on Eventbrite. Kirsty will share the link everywhere and do all that sort of stuff. It yep. should be a crack cracking event. We can take up the 200 people. We'll obviously modify the rooms depending on what numbers we hit. But yeah, um, exactly. Every, and everybody's there is welcome. There's an email that's gone out. There'll be more information going out. Obviously, you'll see it on uh, on all our social media. Jack actually asked the question, is anyone creating a list of all the candidates and their link to social media? Jack is actually all on the website right now. So if you go to the main website, you'll see election 2022 uh, and per state, all the, all the candidates that we have endorsed so far. And uh, Simeon asks, is there a candidate for Bathurst? Not yet, but hopefully soon it could be you. Um, we do need, you know, we do want more candidates around in the regions in particular. So certainly if you're even thinking about it, please put your hand up and get in touch because we want good people around the place so that our members and our supporters and just normal thinking people have a sensible alternative to vote for. Well, thank you very much, Amanda, Steve and Dean for joining us tonight on Liberty Chat. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all soon. Bye. Bye. I love the fact that, you know, we actually do have some really awesome regional candidates now. Um, and whilst we're on the topic of candidates, we are going to welcome a bit of a little superstar that's popped up recently, Mr. Daniel Lukovitz in the electorate of Wentworth. Very fancy. Now, you, hi, Daniel. Hi, Kirsty. Good day, everybody. Hi, Daniel. Good day, mate. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to Libby Chat. Now, Daniel has did made a splash with his uh, announcement of his candidacy on Sky News last week with Rowan Dean, and there's been a lot, a flurry of media and a flurry of emails about Daniel's candidacy. So, Daniel, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Well, there's a there's a weird phenomena that apparently Wentworth is kind of a big deal. I don't I don't really understand it, but. Uh, uh, you know, I, I announced my candidacy on uh, Sky News and then all of a sudden it's in the national papers and people in uh, Tasmania are trying to work out how the hell to pronounce my surname and uh, uh, where the heck uh, Wentworth even is. But a little bit about me. I am the CEO of a company called Calamity. We are a security and life safety monitoring business. Uh, if you met me personally, you'd see I'm about six foot six and a big unit. You probably can't see that in this box. Um, but I am a business owner. Now, people would ask me, how's business? And I, I have no right to complain because I still have my business. Mm. But every single day of the pandemic, I was receiving phone calls from clients of mine who no longer did. Mm. And it actually started to take a toll on me. And there was one in particular that stood out. So we monitor many hundreds of gyms and I had a, a gym owner in there and I know him. Uh, he, he, is, he is a monstrous uh, size of a man. He's a huge unit about the most alpha rugged male you're ever going to meet and he rang me up and said oh look I'm going to have to cancel the service and I said yeah, look you've been a customer for a while don't worry about it obviously the gyms were closed he had zero revenue mm. uh, I said to him look don't worry about it you can have it on me and just you know whenever you catch your breath we'll figure it out 
this guy exploded into tears mm. and he told me that there's nothing left. I've handed the keys back. I've given all the equipment back. There's nothing. And I had lots and lots of calls like that. And, you know, that took a real toll on me. And I've spent, you know, spanning three decades in, in risk management and, and basically dealing with things when bad things happen. So my company, you know, we had a pandemic action plan. Uh, you know, it, it was really business as usual. We had stockpiles of uh, hand sanitizer, you know, long before it was trendy. So we, we kept going, but I was just looking at this from a national level. And the thing that really astonished me is that my, when my grandparents got off the boat here after the Holocaust and they went straight into the rag trade, uh, you know, they, they knew how to sew, they knew how to knit. And this country at some point became so hopeless that we couldn't even make cloth masks to put over our face. And we had to wait for those to arrive by ship, on a ship from China. And two years later, what have we built? What's changed? Absolutely nothing. We are so hopelessly dependent on others that, you know, for us to, you know, threaten to get tough on China or something like that, it's a little bit like when a five-year-old child says, I hate you. Well, so what? We haven't built anything. Um, as, as I said on Sky News, and look, I'll, I'll post a, a link to that in the chat and uh, you can certainly see it via my socials, but uh, as I said then, it, it would be like if someone had been in a coma for the last two years and they just woke up and they opened the papers and they read about gender, they read about climate, they read about the Republic, they read about very fast trains, they wouldn't realise they'd been in a coma for two years, they'd think that they just had a bit of a nap. And, <laughs> you know, that, that's the discourse of politics in this country. And so that's the reason why I, as a, as a business owner, uh, as a father of two uh, children, as someone who understands risk, who understands uh, nation state threat, uh, has realised that, well, look, if you don't rock the boat, you're going to go down with it. And so what's happened, of course, is I've put my hand up in Wentworth, which is where I, you know, where I live most of my life, where I grew up. Uh, and, you know, except for a couple of blips, it is probably the most blue ribbon liberal seat you're ever going to come across. Um, and yet I've had, you know, total strangers calling me, uh, you know, some of them supposedly fabulously wealthy, uh, who are essentially pissed off liberal voters. Uh, and, and they don't feel like the party represents them uh, anymore. So, you know, on, on Sky News, I was uh, described as a conservative or as a real conservative. I, I can understand that might sort of rub some hardcore libertarians up the wrong way. The truth is, you know, my politics are sort of hard to pigeonhole. I don't see politics like barracking for a, a football team where you're left or you're right or you're liberal or you're Labour. And I think people who do that get rusted on and they make really bad decisions. I'm an ideas guy. You know, I date lefties. That happens. That's a thing. You know, and, and, you know, we can talk about stuff. And unfortunately, you know, again, look, looking back at the art of war and some of the conflict management that I've studied over the years, these days um, people don't want to listen to other people. They don't want to listen to differing points of views. And I think one of the key traits of critical thinking is not to try and convince the other person of all the reasons they're wrong, but rather to listen to them and see if there's something they're saying that you might agree with. But when you get on social media, uh, it's a shambles. And even arising from my... Uh, from my uh, jaunt, uh, my independent, so-called independent uh, Allegra Spender in Wentworth, she posted a thing on her Facebook saying, oh, candidate watch, it sounded very anonymous, uh, very uh, ominous. The Liberal Democrats have posted their candidate, Daniel Lukovitz, and here are their policies, uh, you know, uh, and a basing list of the Freedom Manifesto. Now, any reasonable person would sort of look at that and go, oh, you know, actually, they, they make sense. But then the comments blew up and someone has gone, oh, far right party. Now, if you know anything about me or my history, um, it's not that far right. But it's one of these things like, well, anyone I don't agree with must be far right. There's too much of that. And if you think about the, the most basic military strategy, it's called divide and conquer. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we are already divided. And if we're not careful, I know what comes next. Mm. Well, there's a comment in here from Alfred saying there is interest in Daniel because he talks like a leader who knows how to talk to ordinary folk. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> uh, Campbell and John, uh, John, I know that you have known Daniel for a little while. Daniel rang me up short, soon after I joined the party and we became good friends. We were introduced by David Adler, who's um, a terrific fellow. 
and uh, <clears throat> well, and uh, yeah, he said, uh, D David, so look, we, I think this this guy would be a, an ideal Liberal Dem Democrat candidate. And we had a very good chat. We hit it up. I've, I've been to his very impressive business uh, premises. So I'm thrilled to see the, the reception he's getting. I think a lot of journalists live in Wentworth, and I think that's why they're taking a particular... <laughs> of course, Daniel's a very sort of telegenic candidate. Channel 7 News, the 6 o'clock news, gave him about 45 seconds, which is, you know, high up, high up in the news bulletin. So I, off to a terrific start. Daniel, thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you, John. Um, now, one other one other liability that I have, though, as a, as a person who's been banging on about security for many years, um, can't stand Facebook, uh, you know, uh, got banned from Twitter before Donald Trump made it trendy. So I'm sort of kind of starting from scratch with a lot of the social media. So, um, you know, if, if I could get everybody here to like and subscribe, as the kids say, to uh, both go to the website and also to have a look at the uh, uh, the, the Facebook and, and the Twitter. Uh, the reason is because, um, you know, once I, I'm glad I wasn't on Facebook because I get a lot more done in my company having not spent the entire day fighting strangers on the internet. But if I could <laughs> trouble the LDP army to go out and conquer and yeah. vanquish my enemies, that would be fantastic as well. Correct. And that is something that Campbell says all the time. Like we need to, we need to follow all the candidates, like and share their stuff, even if you're just doing a like or a comment or something to pump up the algorithms on Facebook and Twitter and what have you. And, uh, but and, Daniel, we'll put everything yeah. in um, the chat box, but it's also on the website as well. Cam, yeah, sorry, Cam. Yeah, and I'd just like to add that the, the people who are really committed to this cause, who, who come on this, this uh, Liberty Chat, um, hear that message. But can I just ask people this evening, just a slight variation of theme, the other people you know that are members of the party that, that aren't regular attendees, can you get them on board too? Because, look, there's an enormous amount still to be done in this social media. We, you know, we, we are doing really well. Like just that story the other day about David Limbrick's uh, followers on social media in yep. Victoria was great. That shows that. But there's far uh, there's a far greater opportunity here than we're then really exploiting, and it's it's imperative. I've just asked a question, if I may say so, Kirsten. Someone forget the name who asked it before. Someone asked if we were trying to get on seven and nine, etc. Then absolutely, we're trying to get on seven and nine. But I can tell you now, they want to ignore us at this time. And so that's another issue. We've got to be more innovative and, and mm -hmm. topical, and you know, get into stunts and things like that to make to get the airtime. But Social media can help bypass all these people. I mean, Hanson does so well on social media. That's how she reaches her 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 rusted on people. So look, yeah. just as usual, um, that's my my usual <laughs> crack record. You know, please just get everybody Correct. involved in social media, and it, it's across you know t Twitter and and Facebook and Instagram and 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 for the business people. You know, carefully doing it on LinkedIn as well. And you, if you do it the right way on LinkedIn, you'll get a good reaction. But people shouldn't shy away from, from Twitter, Kirsten. You know, you've got to get in there and get in, roll up your sleeves and get into the combat. Yep. And I, as, as I always say, look, you know, if you know, if you if you if you're a bit if you're a bit sensitive, don't read the what comes back your way. Just transmit and yep. then and then block 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 your eyes and yeah, just don't, don't, don't look at it. But Correct. You do that, that's, that's the Joe Rogan method. You just yeah, post you just and then don't look back. Transmit some real zinger and, and, and beat them up and yeah. just then exit. <laughs> drop, drop the bomb and walk yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. That's to great, mate. Campaign. Thank you, everyone. Lovely talking to everybody. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Daniel. Uh, bye. Uh, there's also a lot of comments about Daniel in the chat box. Um, just quickly, there's a, a question here for John saying, as a lifelong, the duration of my children's lives, home educator now in New South Wales, I'm really interested in your view on resources currently used in New South Wales schools. It's very difficult to find historical texts that aren't socialist propaganda. Any suggestions for good text re-Australian history? Okay, and that's from well, look, an anonymous okay. attendee. Okay, well, look, uh, there is a... I think the Liberty Chat, the, the blistery history we did a week or two ago about William Buckley. I think it was last week. It's a, it's a, he wrote, he was a, a convict who went and lived with the Aborigines for 32 years. He, he escaped. It's the greatest insight into Aboriginal history you could ever, uh, you could ever have. And I, I, you, it is not what you get taught in, in the, um, 
in the schools. Um, but look, in terms, look, anything by Jeffrey Blaney is very, very good about Australian history. Uh, so he would, I would, and he's very easy to read. So I would say he would be somewhere to start. Well, and whilst we're on that topic, we will launch into blistery history. John, you've only got a few minutes because we had such a great time talking to those regional uh, candidates. What have you got for us tonight? Were, okay, firstly, I want to talk about the parallels between the overreaction to 9-11 and the overreaction today to COVID. Oh. Okay, now what happened, okay. what happened with, what happened with 9-11 was this. So in the 1980s, the Western world did a lot of very hard economic reforms. And, and then the Soviet Union fell over. And then, and then the 1990s was this beautiful period where, uh, you know, people, I remember people were talking about in the Wall Street Journal, have, have recessions become a thing of history? Are we never going to have another recession? Everything, the, the Soviet Union was becoming democratic. Everything was going good around the world. Then 9-11 comes along. Okay. And you know, the Western world pretty much had no debt by the, you know, before 9-11. So then 9-11 comes along and... You know, that was the, the thing that is underappreciated about 9-11 is that fourth plane was intent, was heading towards the Congress. It was going to blow up the Congress. Now, those hijackers took it down, but, I mean, that would have been the worst of all. So should we have gone into Afghanistan? Of course. You can't go and knock down two World Trade Centers and do all this other stuff. That It was orchestrated by the government of, of, of Afghanistan. We should have gone in there. That only took us six weeks to knock them over. And, and you know, when, after they knock over, that, knocked over that uh, Taliban government, George W. Bush's approval ratings were 91%. So then he thinks, okay, let's keep this ball rolling. Let's go and invade Iraq. Let's go and bring democracy to Iraq. Now, I think probably he had sort of uh, noble, somewhat noble intentions, but he, I think it wasn't about oil. He wanted to bring democracy. But anyway, my point is this. It obviously turned into an extraordinary mess, destabilised the whole Middle East, gave us the bloodshed of ISIS and everything else. So it was a, it was a crisis. But the interesting thing is this. Nine, the, the Afghan war and the Iraq war, war were initially electorally very popular. John Howard in 2004 had a huge victory, got control of the Senate for the first time. Tony Blair gets re-elected very comfortably in 2005 and George W. Bush got re-elected. And in fact, in 2002, George W. Bush, his Republican Party, went ahead in the midterm elections, which basically never happens to an incumbent president in their first term. So originally... Initially, 9-11 politics was very good for incumbents. Now, then fast forward, they all lost the next election. John Howard gets booted out. Uh, George W. Bush completely collapsed in the polls and, and the Tony Blair's party lost the next election. So because they overreacted. Now, this what I think is happening here with COVID. If we could look back, we would say what the world looked at. That original strain of COVID um, was you know pretty deadly okay uh, well, you know probably three or four times worse than a normal flu uh they made it 30 times worse but and and, and originally initially that, that you know people you know, we probably should have been like sweden but you know now that we have go governments all around the world have massively overreacted to it and, and it was good covid politics was good for the incomers but what i think what i am sensing around the world right now is it's it's similar to what happened with um I hope we're still there. <laughs> I can yeah. hear you. We similar just lost to, your vision for a second. It's similar. Okay, the overreaction to COVID, just like we 9-11 was a huge event. COVID was a huge event. Governments tend to overreact. This is what's happening right now. Britain has just basically abolished the whole lot. Britain has said you know, that they were going to have 80,000 nurses in England were going to lose their job because they didn't want the vaccine. Boris Johnson said two days ago, you don't need to be, you, you do not need to be vaccinated if you're a nurse. Unbelievable. Now, this is what's going to happen. What's happening here with ScoMo, you know, this there was a massive, massive drop three months out from the election, a massive five point drop in the primary vote, even if it's only half accurate. It's looking bad for him. If ScoMo caught an election a year ago, he would have won, would have won big time. Okay. Jacinda won big time. You know, Mark McGowan won big time. Uh, Anastasia. I think these people overreacting to COVID, I think. The ballot box is going to catch up with them. And they, I think people are going to vote for the Liberal Democrats, Kirsty. Well, that plan. Oh, bless you, Campbell. Yes. Um, there is a comment here from Grant saying, I read the book on William Buckley. It was a good recommendation and was an amazing read. So thank you, John. Oh, and good. Liam good. also says he started reading it after you mentioned it last week. He said it's an awesome book. Good to hear. Um, good to hear. Now, we'll get to a few more of these questions. There is one from Matador. 
And he says, he or she, I don't know, um, says, first of all, it's nice to see Daniel here, having dealt with calamity over the years. So that was great. Uh, question for Campbell. In your experience as Premier, have you had to deal with intervention from the federal government? I know the Northern Territory and ACT are not states, and so technically the federal government could have stopped their crazies dead on, but could they do a similar thing for states without passing an act? Oh, it comes down to um, what particular area of, mm. I suppose, our life and the law that uh, the matter pertains to. You know, if, if it's I would have said generally, generally, generally that they can through the power of the purse. And yes, I guess there was it was a degree of intervention with me. For example, the NDIS was essentially forced on Queensland and other states. Now we wanted to do such a thing, but what was forced on us essentially was signing onto a program that then, you know, has just proceeded to proceed without real controls and 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 proper planning and measures and now it's the 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 sort of the, the diabolical mess that it's in so i mean that's an example um we also had an issue where we had a senate uh, committee with clive palmer's uh, people on it um and backed by labor doing an inquiry into the the uh, the lnp government in queensland so the the feds can sort of weigh in a bit but i mean just if, to, to cut to the chase on covid and, and some of the issues i mean morrison could have should have challenged the border shuts down, and now he wears the pain. I think you'd agree, John. He wears the pain of what McGowan, for example, is doing, um, and he could could have and should have uh, gone after vaccine mandates using the external affairs power. Uh, at least he could have tried uh, in the federal parliament to introduce legislation to use that. So yeah, you can. Campbell, and, and, and you've always got the dollars. The dollars are, you know, like you know, when I was a premier, I can tell you now. The Prime Ministers I dealt with being Abbott uh, and uh, Rudd for a period of time and um, and Gillard, they were all quite happy to use the dollar bill to, to get what they wanted out of you. Campbell, one of one of the I brought up this issue of you know what the feds could have done with the mandates. And I, I said, oh well, you know, the feds have allowed it to happen. I mean, couldn't they have just amended the Australian Immunization Register Act to Alter the valid uses for immunisation data, and then that would have that would have blocked oh, it, right? I mean, there, oh, there's David, a whole bunch of ways they could have done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, David. There are a number of different ways. But look, I'll let people in on a little secret. Won't be a secret after I say this. So I was talking to a federal MP in the last week and a half, shall we say, two weeks, and this person basically said to me, Morrison may have said. Uh, publicly that is against vaccine mandates, but he revealed to me that he actually supports them. Mm. So that's the truth of it. So that's what a ocean going, uh, two faced piece of work that he is that cannot tell the truth. Okay. Um, and I don't mind saying that. I mean, that's why I'm here with you good folk. Mm. Um, so that, you know, that that's why he's not doing anything because he, because he, 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 he doesn't, he, he wants to see that imposed. He could stop them. That's right. Uh, and Michael says, 100% correct, Campbell. Um, changing topic a little bit, there's a question here from Richard, who is Richard Mather, who is our Tamworth branch coordinator. And I think this will be a good one for you, David. What is the best way to win the argument when you know your opponent, opponent is referring to the Liberal Party and you're trying to win them over to the Lib Dems without making them feel foolish? Is there a winning formula to this problem? Oh, yeah. Well, I get that one a bit. I'm not sure if there's a winning formula. Mm. There's, a, there's a great thing that I've noticed that if someone mistakes us for uh, the Liberal Party, usually it's that they've noticed it. And they said, oh, you're a bit different from the rest of the guys in the Liberal Party. <laughs> and they're usually relieved when you tell them you're not part of the Liberal Party. So, oh, you're not one of those guys. So, um, I think just gently telling people that the Liberal Party and the, and the Liberal Democrats are different parties. Uh, totally separate from each other and you know our beliefs are, are different I think so um, yeah it's I, I think people generally when you tell them and point out the difference they're actually relieved in many ways. <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. Now we are, oh that was a nice little little love heart emoji react from Richard for that answer. Thanks David. Um, now we are of course going to play our third Freedom Manifesto video and this one stars 
Campbell Newman, one of our panelists tonight. Um, this one is about debt and deficit. Let's play the video. To count to one trillion, it will take you 32,000 years. When I tell you that Australia is on track to have an estimated net debt of one trillion dollars by 2025, it becomes much more clear that we're on the path to destitution. It's time for accountability, real leadership, and to get our books back in the black. G'day, I'm Campbell Newman, and I'm your Queensland Senate candidate for the Liberal Democrats. In this video, I want to talk to you about the third policy in the Liberal Democrats' Freedom Manifesto, debt and deficit. The Liberal Democrats have multiple solutions to tackle the debt. We'll do this by implementing the following changes with exception to the Defence Force. Firstly, abolish duplicate government departments. We have a federal department of education, but no federal schools. Let's cut the bureaucracy to support better education. Immediately cut 10% to all federal departments. Government departments exist on taxpayer dollars and their budgets are increasing every single year. It's only right that we cut the fat and require them to live within their means like we all have to. Privatise the ABC and SBS because it's only fair that the ABC and SBS compete in the free market like any business. It should not be the taxpayer's responsibility to pay for something they don't use or don't want to use. Abolish all nanny state advertising. Anti-smoking ads, for example, don't work. We have real solutions that can be found in our manifesto. Repeal renewable energy mandates and the associated subsidies for renewable energy. Abolish all middle class welfare in favour of tax cuts for you. Reduce political staff by 50% and abolish taxpayer funding of political parties. Adopting this policy will mean that you're securing your children's future. Right now, future taxpayers are subsidising current waste and the major parties just ignore the debt and hope the citizens don't think about it. Well, we're thinking about it and the Liberal Democrats will bring about a better and brighter future for all Australians. The government needs to stop sacrificing your children's future to pay for their own luxuries. The Liberal Democrats will cut the debt, provide real leadership and give you back more of your hard-earned money. To learn more, head to www.ldp.org.au. Authorised by John Humphreys for the Liberal Democratic Party, Mount Waverley, Victoria. Oh, well, there's that was some, great, Campbell. There's some great comments in there. Yeah. What a love for that, Cam. Well, watching your face, watching yourself well, there. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. At least, at least I can say this to people: we demonstrated you could do it. So, for the members tonight this evening, here's here's the here are the facts: we cut spending in Queensland. We spent less in a, you know one year than we had in the previous year. And contrary to the baloney that is spoken these days and the revisionist nonsense and the fact that the LNP have run away from their own record, you know, the, the police still fought crime effectively. Uh, when you called the fire brigade, they turned up. Uh, ambulance ramping was eliminated. We had the best surgical waiting times in the nation because we had better management. So that's the thing to say to people if they challenge these, if you're talking to them about these policies. Better management will get better outcomes. Um, it's not about more dollars. And we did, did deliver in Queensland. It can be done. So, I mean, that, that's just my thought, bolted mm -hmm. onto that. So I guess on this one, at least people believe that Newman means he's going to cut something. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, no, well, as I said, there's a lot of love, <laughs> lot of love in the chat. Who, who, who drew my hat out, hat, <laughs> my name out of the hat for this one? Yeah, was that an accident? <laughs> Doesn't uh, sound like it to me. <laughs> but there is a lot of great comments in there. People are saying awesome, great. And one of my favourites, that one that someone said, that was good as. I love that comment. Um, no, that was really great. So, and people are asking, how can we share? It will be on our YouTube channel uh, within a few minutes. And obviously we do want you to definitely share spread the love all around. It is up on the website right now um, on, the, on the YouTube channel and therefore also our website. 
and Facebook. I'm getting all these notifications and it's up on Facebook. So please definitely share, spread it around to all of your friends and family, like get the message out. These are short, simple video policies because uh, some people don't want to read the whole Freedom Manifesto much as uh, how much hard work John put into writing it. Um, not everyone wants to read it. Sorry, John. These little two minute oh. videos are fantastic. I thought it was fantastic, Campbell. Well done. Good. It's very well presented. And it's a, you know, whenever people say to me, oh, well, you surely, you know, ScoMo on average, on, on balance has done a good job. I said, what about the $1.2 trillion debt? You know, no one, no one, everyone says, oh, well, yeah, I suppose that's a problem. It's a big problem. This, this desperate dude in the last week or so, $20 million to buy the rights mm. to the copyright for the Aboriginal flag, which should have been bought, what should have been secured, but it should have been bought by Aboriginal groups themselves because yeah, their true. flag, they should have bought it. Plenty of money there. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, A billion dollars for the Great Barrier Reef. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Great Barrier Reef uh, has all sorts of measures in place to protect it. Um, and the other one, $2 billion in the last sort of 48 hours for universities to commercialise research they don't need it and they will, you know, they will misuse it. Uh, what we need is to lower taxes and simplify things so entrepreneurs can go after that research, real business people, to commercialise great ideas out of universities. His policies are the wrong policies. They're profligate and they're wasteful. And that should be what we're saying to people. He is, well, he, he, you can't even say labour light anymore. I think he, he, he's morphing into labour, you know, sort of full alcohol, you know, okay. super, super, you know, 5% alcohol content. Full strength, full yeah. strength labour. Chris is saying, preach it, Campbell, preach it. When I was watching the video, I couldn't help get the image out of my mind of Ron Swanson with the slash it flag. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that was going through my mind. Yes. Someone, one of our meme lords needs to make that and put Campbell's face on Oh, that, come on. Yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we need it. We need it. Please, one of our meme people, please make that. Um, it's been another great episode of Liberty Chat. Thank you all of, uh, uh, for joining us again. Oh, David, do you have to say something else? Uh, just a uh, quick plug. Again, uh, this Saturday, Kingston Heath Reserve, Cheltenham at 11 a.m. Be there or be square. I'll be there too. So I'm not square. But I am anyway. <laughs> um, and also tomorrow night on uh, Paul Murray Live, I'll be on that too. Um, actually, I'll be on pretty much every week now on Thursday night, which is great. Yes. So um, please tune in. And you just make that announcement a little bit better. Stop trying to hide it. David is going to be on a weekly, is it Thursday night, Paul Murray Live, every week? Well, not every week because Parliament sits and stuff. But yes, yeah. basically, I'll be on pretty much every week on Paul Murray on Thursday night. So that's Big news. awesome. Yeah, very big news. Uh, well, as I said, thanks everyone for joining us tonight and we shall see you all next week. Thank you, John, David and Campbell and to our wonderful regional guests and also to Daniel in Sydney. Thanks all. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for Liberty Chat, brought to you by the Liberal Democrats. Visit ldp.org.au for more info.